We did a lot of work yesterday with technology to try and understand this new idea that we called variance. We introduced this idea because when you have a look at different probability distributions, distributions that are actually very different to one another can have the same expected value. Do you remember this? So we kind of imagined three different dice, just a normal one, one where the only two things you could get were one and six, and then this weird die where it was like a two, three, and a four, and it was a bit uneven. But the probability distribution was such that the expected value for all of them was three and a half. It was identical, right? Even though the dice were really different. And so we said, look, variance is this way of measuring how is your probability spread out? So it's not a measure of center, it's a measure of spread. And we calculated these numbers here. We used a spreadsheet to help us with that. Uh, it turned out we got exactly six and a quarter for this one, but these other two numbers, they're approximations. That's why I've got those squiggly equal signs, okay? Now, this is kind of where we left off from yesterday, but this idea of variance, it, it kind of leads to two issues that we want to explore today. So the first issue is that, Remember, in order to uh, calculate the variance, we did, we did this thing. Let's, let's unpack it, right? x, which is whatever score you've got, you subtract mu. What was that again? That's, that's the expected value or the mean of that set, right? You do that difference, and uh, we called that difference, each one of those individual differences, we called those deviations. Right? So for example, the mean for all of these dice was three and a half, yeah? So if we looked at one of them, like one take away three and a half, that's negative two and a half. Negative two and a half is a deviation. But then we squared. Why did we, um, why did we square again? What was that about? Tanuki? We wanted something positive, right? Because we didn't want our negative deviations and our positive deviations to cancel each other out. We actually wanted to see how much is everything spread out, and so that's why we squared. It made everything positive, right? Then we multiplied by the probability of each thing. We weighted it, and then we got these numbers, OK? So there are two issues, like I said, that flow out of this. Here's the first one, squaring. This squaring thing, it solved a problem for us, right? It made everything positive, thumbs up, right? But the problem with it is, all of the numbers we've got for variance now, they're kind of they're huge, right? Say for example, look at this one and six die, right? We've got a variance of 6.25. Except on the die, the biggest you can go is six. And in fact, the gap between one and six is only five. So this number here, and all of these numbers here, they're all out of proportion because we squared them, right? Now, there's a really easy solution to that. Now that we've added up everything, all we need to do is, see these numbers here, let's just take the square root. That'll get us back to the right size of numbers, okay? Now, this thing that we, let's actually just go ahead and calculate. Can you get your calculators out for each of these? 2.92, 6.25, We're going to obviously have some rounding involved, which is fine. Uh, I already know this, this middle one here is, uh, actually, no, I don't think I do. Is it 2.5? It's 2.5, isn't it? Yeah. We got, we got 2.5 from that one. Can someone give me the first square root? Square root of 2.92, what do you get? Maybe a couple of decimal places would be nice. 1.709. 1.709, so I'll round that to 1.71. And then uh, this last one down here, who's got that one already? Yeah. 0 0.76. 0 0.76. Just six will do. Yeah, you've rounded it already. Cool, all right. Now, these three numbers here, these actually are much more useful than the variance because we squared with variance and now we've taken the square root to get back to the right size of number, as it were, okay? Now, a few things to note. Firstly, uh, it's a bit weird <laughs> that this number is bigger than this one. It's because this number is less than one. When you take the square root of any number less than one, it actually gets bigger, not smaller. That's the first thing. The second thing is, what we've done is, these deviations, right? We've kind of standardized them. We've made them comparable to each other, right? So we call these red numbers the, something you know already, standard deviation. Now, you encountered standard deviation back in years 9 and 10, but we kind of just got the calculator to magically determine the value for us, right? What the calculator was doing was all of this in the background, taking the square root and all that kind of thing, okay? Now, just like you've seen before, like long words, we like to come up with abbreviations for these. So far, we've been using a lot of Greek letters to do that. 
standard deviation starts with an S. What's the Greek letter for S again? Sigma, we already used it, rats, okay? But that's all right. Remember I told you that in Greek, just like in English, there's uppercase and lowercase. This is the uppercase sigma. This is the lowercase sigma. I can't believe that sigma means what it means now. But anyway, this is what we use, okay? This is the lowercase sigma. It's like an O with a bit of a weird hat on it, okay? So we use this symbol to indicate standard deviation and you'll see it all the time. In fact, if you go to your calculator and when you go into statistics mode, you will see this symbol appear and that's what it means. And let's just remember, how did we actually calculate it? The standard deviation equals the square root of whatever your variance is, okay? Now, just before we go on to, I said there was a couple of issues, right? This is the first issue. We'll come, get to the second one in a minute. Um, this idea of standard deviation it's so powerful. It is so useful. And to illustrate this, I want us to just imagine this situation, right? So let's suppose you have been doing some assessment tasks. Can you imagine that? Is that difficult to reach for, right? Suppose you know what your marks are, and just by a weird chance, right, you get exactly the same mark in all three of these tests, okay? Now, you know that just because you got 70, 70 might be good, or 70 might be not so good. For example, if in this first test, the mean, the average score for everyone who did this test, if it was 80, then in test one, you got below average. So you're like, okay, I got some things to work on, right? Even though your score is exactly the same in test two, you got above average. So you're like, okay, I guess I should be happy with that, right? Now what I want you to do is have a look at these last two tests, test two and three, and what I want you to imagine is that we go ahead and not just calculate the mean, we also calculate the standard deviation. Now, remember, what is it the standard deviation tells you? It's how, how spread out the people are, okay? So when you see these numbers here, 10, 10, and 5, the larger that number is, like in this situation here, the larger the number is, the more the data is spread out, right? So 2.5 was the biggest um, uh, the widest distribution, I should say, and that's because the only two options were one and six, so they were very far ends, okay? So when you have a look at these last two tests, forget about the first one for a minute, right? The mean is the same. So you're like, oh, I got 10 marks above average in both cases, right? But do you see how this set of data here, test number three, it has a much smaller standard deviation, which means what? Yeah. It means you did better, but to, to take a step back, the reason why we did better is because in test three, the scores were much closer bunched together. Does that make sense? So I guess if we were to draw like a, a very rough graph of this, maybe you wanna do this with me, right? When we think about what a, a distribution of scores looks like, right? Um, for both of these, the average is, let's call this 50 and this 100. So the mean is 60, right? This first one might look something like this, whereas this one, the scores are more bunched together, right? So even though the mean is still at 60, there's 50 and 100, the mean is still here, it's a higher peak, right? So if you're 10 marks above, you're like in, in this spot here as opposed to here. Can you see in the first one, you're like right in the middle of that big pile of people. There's a lot of people who got one standard deviation above the mean. But there are far fewer down this end. You're like up this more difficult end up here. So if you know what the standard deviation is, this is actually a very important information for you. Now next time you're like, oh, how did I go? Did I get above or, 50, above or below 50%? I actually don't care about 50%. I care about where you are in relation to the mean and how spread out the data is. By the way, just for curiosity's sake, the harder a test is, the more it spreads people out. Just think about that for a second. If a test was super, super easy, what would happen is everyone would be bunched up because they'd get really high marks, yeah? And the problem with this situation is, I can't tell you all apart. You all have like 96s and 97s and 98s, and I don't know, like two marks difference, it's really hard to tell because the test was so easy. Tests like this are actually better for you and for us because you're more spread out, but the way to do this is to make a test hard. So if you ever wondered why are these tests so difficult, this is actually the statistical reason.